Hello everybody, this is Jacob from NextGent. In this video I'm going to show you how to subnet using bit identification technique in a Class B default network. As this video is an extension from my previous two videos, Subnetting Made Easy Part 1 and Part 2, I would suggest that you watch those prior to watching this video as they do contain a lot of information I'm not going to cover in this one. You'll notice that I have an extension of the binary chart up here and this extension is to cover the amount of hosts um, all the moving all the way up into the class B. So we're going to use this when we're moving our slider, moving our line to determine how many bits we're going to have in our host field given a certain number of host requirement. So I'll explain this a little bit further. If we had a requirement for 30 hosts, you should know now that we would place our line here because 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is actually 31 but then you subtract another to give you 30 usable hosts. We could have 60 hosts if we if we extend it out this way and that would mean that there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits here being used for the host field. If I change my line to let's say we wanted 4,000 hosts okay here we have already have 8 bits in this octet here we would also have four more bits being used in the host field for a total of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bits being used in the host field. And if you're using 12 bits in the host field, that means you have 20 bits in the subnet field because there's a total of 32 bits, correct? So knowing that information, we'll, we'll be able to figure out our subnets, etc., etc. So let me go ahead and pop up our requirements here and we'll get started on the actual subnetting. Here are our requirements. We need to create four total subnets. We need to create two subnets with 1,000 usable IP addresses in each one of those two. We need to create one subnet with 500 usable IP addresses in that one, and one more subnet with 100 usable IP addresses. And we're not going to waste any address space at all. So our given network ID is 170.70.0.0. And this is a default class B network. 170 class B between 128 and 191. The mask is the default mask, 255.255.0.0. So this is what we're given. And because that is the basic network, we know that that is going to be subnet number 1, 170.70.0.0. Now it is up to us to figure out what the mask is going to be. So if we need to create a subnet with 1,000 usable IP addresses, we need to draw our line, right? We need to draw our line to contain 1,000 usable IP addresses. Does 256 plus 128 plus 64 and all these equal around 1,000? No, it doesn't. It actually equals 511. So let's move our line to right here because we know if we do that, all these 512, 256, 128, etc., etc., is a part of the host field. Granted, these are two different octets, but there's a total of 10 bits here that we're going to be using in the host portion. And if we're using 10 bits in the host portion, that means we're going to have how many bits remaining in the subnet field? There's 32 bits overall. That means we're going to have 22 bits in our subnet field. And that will also give us our mask. And I'm going to go ahead and place that information up. There you have it. Under subnet number 1, we have our mask of 22 bits and decimal of 255.255.252.0. So the next step is going to be to identify the next usable subnet. That way we can get our broadcast address very easily and then all the hosts in the subnet fall in between there. So to find the next available subnet, we need to define, we need to identify the value of the 22nd bit. The value of the 22nd bit. Well, the 22nd bit resides in the third octet. So we're still manipulating 8 bits because you're always manipulating one octet. The 22nd bit is the let's see we have 16 in the default C so then we're or in default B I'm sorry so then we're moving into the third octet here so we have 16 by default B 17 18 19 20 21 22 22 4 is the value of the 22nd bit so that gives us actually the value of our next subnet our next subnet is going to be 170.70.4.0 and now knowing that our next available subnet and what that is, we can easily 
define the broadcast of subnet number one because the broadcast of subnet number one subnet number one is always going to be one less than the next available so that would be 170.70.3.255 that's the broadcast for subnet number one and everything in between that so 170.70.0.1 all the way to 170.70.3.255 or 254 is going to be a host all right so we created our first subnet 1000 hosts let's go ahead and create the next subnet with 1000 hosts 22 bit and the decimal mask here okay there we go and let's go ahead and define our subnet number three the value of subnet number three that way we can get our broadcast from subnet number two so we know that the 22nd bit counts up by fours the value of the 22nd bit is four so the value of the next available network or subnet is going to be 170.70.8. So we have that here. Let's go ahead and define the broadcast for subnet number two, which is always one less than the next available network. One less than 170.70.8.0 is 170.70.7.255. So there we have our broadcast for subnet number two is 170.70.7.255. 170.70.4.1 all the way to 170.70.7.254 are your hosts. Subnet number three. The next requirement is to create one subnet with 500 usable IP addresses. So let's move our line here to contain 500 usable hosts or IP addresses. We know that there's 256 here plus another 256 is going to give us around 500, right? And it is exactly 511 minus 1 usable so that's 510 usable if we draw our line right here and how many bits is that in the host field that's 8 plus 1 which is 9 okay so there we have it and now let's define our next available subnet the value of the 23rd bit is 2 the value of the 23rd bit is 2 so that means we're going to count up by a series of twos in this third octet where the 23rd bit resides so the next available network or subnet is going to be 170.70.10.0. So now we can easily define our broadcast for subnet number 3 as 170.70.9.255. So now we can continue on to subnet number 4, which we need to create a subnet containing 100 usable IP addresses. So we'll have to move our line to contain 100 usable IP addresses. So just what is our mask and sitter going to be with 100 usable IP addresses? So we're moving from this octet, the third octet, into the fourth octet here with our mask. So our mask is going to extend beyond 23 and beyond 24 and into the 25 range. And actually it is going to be 25 because we see here that we're using 7 bits in our host field. And that leaves this one, uh, this 25th bit here for our subnet mask go ahead and put that out put that down here okay so there we have defined our mask is 170 or is 255.255.128 and we have 25 bits in our CIDR now I know this is the last requirement we figured it out but let's go ahead and see what the bits in between there would be the broadcast and the next available subnet the next available subnet is going to count up by the value of the 25th the value of the 25th bit is as we defined 128. So the next subnet is going to be 170.70.10.128. As you can see, we have that here, 170.70.10.128. And that means that the broadcast is going to be one less. So the broadcast or subnet number four will be one less, 170.70.10.127. So there we have it. We have successfully subnetted we've created four subnets from a default class B the only difference is when you're choosing your host you just have to remember that when you move into another octet those binary digits just keep on doubling for the amount of hosts it can support so if you were to have a whole entire class B full of hosts you would add all these numbers together so I want to thank all you guys for viewing the video uh, please follow us on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash nextgent, N-E-X-G-E-N-T. Again, I'd like to thank you for viewing, and have a good evening.